Whew. Free Boys TV. I'm absolutely exhausted. Shouts to Dubs and Big Up Marty. I'm here with Curtis once again. It's finished Arsenal nil. Aston Villa 2. Um, Curtis, man, talk to me because, you know, Liverpool, they lost against Crystal Palace and it was all Arsenal's for the taking. What's your analogy, man? What's your, and that, sorry, what's your analysis on the it's game? disappointing, very disappointing. The thing is, like, I was at the Tolleton, I was watching another game, I thought I'd get a quick pre-match plan and obviously... The, Tolleton, the Tolleton, you're talking about the Tolleton pub, yeah? Yeah, for those, for those of you that don't know, the Tolleton, yeah? Yeah, the Tolleton arms, yeah, obviously, by the Emirates, shout them out. Yes, Went yes. for a quick pre-match plan. And I was obviously watching Liverpool game and obviously I see like, obviously they conceded and then obviously I come to the game and obviously keep an eye on the score and obviously see that the game finished up with, there was Palace, it was Palace they were playing and obviously they finished 1-0, one, um, one uh, Liverpool lost 1-0. Yeah. So I think, oh, it's all to play for, like, you know, we stand a good chance because obviously in the pack, Liverpool, Manchester City and us. Anyway, like, back onto the game, disappointing, man. Like, first of all, with the lineup, so... Left back position, we're starting again with Sinchenko, who we already know is susceptible at left back to like, you know, counter attacking. And we know like defensively he's not great. And I know that they rate him in terms of like his overload into the midfield. But even with the overload into the midfield, I don't think that what he offers uh, outweighs his like, ne you know, the cons when playing in that position. What I'd have liked to see is Tommy Yasu start. Similar to the conversation we had the other night, I would have started like. Tommy Yasu, like he got minutes the, other, the last couple of games got minutes yeah fair enough like we couldn't start Kivio today because obviously he's also even though he's been playing well Kivio he's susceptible as well a left back but I would have started Tommy Yasu left back C uh, it's back quite back. interesting though you say that Curtis it's interesting you say that however you know we could there was I think at half time 14 shots compared to Aston Villa's 6 That's and the there was a lot of chances created we could have easily been or should have been on another day we would have been 4-0 up and easily it's frustrating because like, our centre back pairing obviously shout out like Saliba and Gabriel they played quite well Ben White on the right right back position it was our forwards today like the midfield battle it wasn't too bad like I know we had like Havertz there floating obviously with like Odegaard and obviously we had like Declan Rice there as well and then obviously in terms of like you know Saka Saka, Saka didn't play too bad today but it's disappointing he didn't put that chance away Jesus I can see like Jesus is still not fit enough I have it though he, he had a clear cut chance Clear. Well, then again, Trossard as well. Trossard, like Martinez, you know. It was disappointing, especially like with the Trossard chance because obviously he booted it straight at the keeper. I'd have liked to see Trossard place it in the corner. Saka, Saka wasn't too bad today, but I would have liked to see him score that because I've seen him score absolute screamers before. If I think back to, I think it was Manchester United at home last season, man, he scored from way far out. And even the other, like the other night here in the Champions League, Saka scored a similar goal from quite far out. Uh, death wing position Trossel wasn't too bad but there was a few chances he did miss and then in terms of like in-game management for Mateta like similar like I said the other day in-game management was poor the, the, some of the decisions were poor both in terms of starting lineup but also in terms of subs so when I looked was it like 60th minute they brought Liam Bailey on for Aston Villa and straight away I was getting nervous I was just thought Sinchenko there at left back he's going to be getting beat up and down that wing from when we saw Leon Bailey play Aston Villa Manchester United and I think that was a game where Villa at their own place beat Manchester United 2-0 and I think Bailey had a goal and assist and I was worried like thinking back to that game that Bailey would cause us all sorts of problems so yeah it was, it was disappointing man like from that perspective so it's frustrating because obviously we, we have brought it to be fair to, to April and we brought it a lot further on than we did last season. But I just feel kind of like we've gifted Manchester City the title today because with Liverpool dropping points, all we had to do is grind a result out. Or even if we weren't going to get a result, we could have kept it at 0-0 and got the draw. So it concerns me the in-game management. Yeah, does, does this um, diminish... Is this the beginning of a depletion now? <laughs> or sort of a... Decline. Are we on it? Are we on well, a decline? sort of decline. decline uh, yeah, basically. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit frustrating. But, like... Even like when he brought like Jorginho on, like I don't know what he thought he was going to achieve by bringing Jorginho on, and I know we had like Havertz floating as like as like a number nine, but again like today Havertz finishing was poor. Like I know he's popped up in moments during the season, but this is where these are the key moments of the season were like really defining, and I feel that a lack of a clinical number nine or a wide forward who can play across the all, all three positions would really benefit us. So by not having a versatile winger who could play right wing, left wing, 
centre forward or having a, a clinical striker mm. is really hurts because we've come into the business end of the season and you know we've just lost 2 0 yeah. to Aston Villa at home. Yeah, can we still win the title, Curtis? It's disappointing. I think the title's done. Similar to like I said to you, I think it was the Liverpool Newcastle game when I said to you, I think Manchester City and Liverpool will win the title. So, but we go again, and obviously, all eyes will see on Wednesday. You'll see focus on the Champions League. Obviously, we've got Bayern Munich away, which is going to be a very tough ask going away to Bayern Munich. Obviously, currently 2 2 in aggregate, so we've got to win a Bayern Munich away to go through to next stage of the Champions League. But who knows? I think it's realistically they're going to extend Arteta's contract and we'll be with him another two years. We'll have to see what we do next year. But we need to make some key signings because we have to next year bring, if we're going to compete again, we've got to bring the title charge at the end of the season. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, shout out to T, shout out to Marty, shout out to Dubs. Three Pointers TV, let's go.